So. Well, hello. Once again, you have found a Texas Steampunk Connection. Broadcasting to you throughout the multiverse, Steamverse, from our various bunkers and airships. With me, as always, is Fax, Gentleman Adventurer. Hello, hello. <laughs> with me is Jack from Steam Chest. Hello. <laughs> And we have with us today, Master Blue Stocking from <laughs> Steampunk Dollhouse Podcast. So once again, we are here to talk oh, probably about Steampunk, most likely. That's what this is about. Thank you for listening to the Texas Steampunk Connection. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in with us at Texas Steampunk Connection. Tonight is, uh, let's see, December 13th. We have... Less than two weeks left before uh, no, no. The, the, the Christian holiday uh, of gift giving, and uh, the panic shopping has uh, probably begun. Hopefully, um, I'd like to welcome tonight uh, Kitty from Fair Treasures. Blue Stocking was not able to make it; she was having some uh, issues, but uh, Kitty has uh, agreed to fill in, and uh, which is great because she is a vendor and uh, has her own shop, fairtreasures.com. So she's got another uh, point of view on this whole last minute panic shopping thing, I hope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you guys started your Christmas shopping? Yes? No? no. Yes. I have started the wonders of credit cards. I don't have to wait to get paid. It's terrible. I'm but, a horrible, uh, horrible procrastinator. I usually start around like August. So it's not this huge financial burden. It's just the last couple of years it just has not worked out. I, I have hardly bought proper Christmas presents in like five years. So there's that. What's a proper Christmas present? Um, giving what, gifts to Christmas people Christmas. in my better family. <laughs> Improper Christmas present. Completely forgetting to get anything and going, oh, screw it, never mind. <laughs> you know, sometimes the best thing that two people can give each other is a decision to not give each other anything. That is very true. Yeah. But it sucks when it's family members that live on the other side of the country and you have forgotten They're, all yeah. holidays and birthdays for years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get that. And then that's, of course, where we are once again. Uh, <laughs> uh, what what can we get people who uh, we we uh, we owe, <laughs> or, or we yeah. feel, you know, yeah. a certain amount of guilt to? Um, Just want to like and, write a check for I don't know how many thousand dollars and be like, I'm sorry, and then going, wait, I don't have this amount of money. Crap. <laughs> yeah. Just get them a puppy. They keep giving. It's great. See that that is the that is one of the wrong gifts. Maybe <laughs> chickens. <laughs> oh, um, maybe a duck. No one can ooh. say no to a duck. Because the ducks will actually eat all the bugs and insects, and yeah, or a makes a better garden. If you really want to prove your point, give them a goose. Or if you want to give them something that will <laughs> attack <laughs> everything around it, a swan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really pissed off goose. <laughs> <laughs> or what? What's the uh, what's the badly translated swan? A uh, a cobra duck. Cobra duck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to uh, we need to get to if we're going to talk about uh, uh, this sort of um, panicking and uh, how we're going to recover. Panicking um, Christmas cheer. Are you are you guys ready to uh, get your drink on? Oh yes. God! Yes, I've already started. <laughs> oh, oh, in that case, Jack, you must go first. Well, I still have a little bit of the the the, the Voodoo Ranger left over from last time. I have yet to drink it all, so it's the Juice Force IPA. It is delicious. Yes. Yeah, people who can't see, you know, it's a uh, yeah, the orange container. Kitty, do you have anything you're uh, drinking tonight? I have Dreamsicle. Dream sickle. So it's uh it is a mixture of orange and uh whipped cream flavored vodkas in A and W cream soda. 
which yep. currently I need to go and buy more of because this is my last one. Mm. But if you uh, go to the liquor store and go into the vodka section, there is now this brand called Vale, and they have gone absolutely bonkers with so many flavors of vodkas. I've never seen anything like it. It's amazing. And that's what I'm using. <laughs> oh, I've had a dream sickle vodka mix like that. And I will say it's if you could, you just have to get it really cold though. Like you have to have to like mix it and sit in the like, freezer for 20 minutes. Eh. Nah. I, mean, I mean, okay. So <laughs> hear me out on this. When I lived in Maryland with my brother, we drove six hours to the nearest Sonic in Delaware just to get a pickle. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's terrible. We were also happy to be going to the beach, but it ended up being we basically realized we found this random Sonic in the middle of a cornfield in Delaware. It was the weirdest thing. It, like, it, it still exists. It's there, but it was like one of those barrage moments where you're like, this can't be here. This is not right. But, uh, so we would make the, the the homage trip out to uh, get ourselves an orange dream sickle, and I don't know why like it, it it's it's in the same ballpark as your drink, and it just mm -hmm. mm. yes, yeah. I actually uh, originally was using this uh, vodka that Mitchell had that was a dream sickle mixture of vodka, and it just sat in our freezer for um, so I think he bought it in college. And I finished it <laughs> off mm, last year. <laughs> that connector pair was bad. No, it doesn't. So, you know, anyway. it just, it took up a lot of space in the freezer. So this is a giant freaking bottle. And yeah. then I went to replace it because I used it up and I liked it. And uh, it doesn't exist anymore. So I was like, okay, well, what's the next best thing? Found this other brand. And while they don't have a dreamsicle mix, they do have orange. They do have vanilla. And they do have whipped cream. And I was like, mm, I think I'll go for whipped cream over vanilla. <laughs> and it turns cream out nice. flavored vodka. That sounds oh, intriguing. I, I have a big bottle of whipped cream flavored vodka in my stores that I don't know what to do with. So I guess I guess now I do. <laughs> it, and that's, drink is great. Don't, don't do this that. This is much stuff. better than adding it to coffee. Don't add it to coffee. I have heard very bad things about adding whipped cream vodka to coffees. Fair. I don't yeah. think I would do that. It doesn't. It, it sounds like a good idea in theory, but in theory, apparently it's not. No, apparently you need, it's bad. You need, yeah, if you don't have the heavy, like the the the, the fat or the yeah. fats from the milk, it's gonna be a. It's gonna just be weird. Yeah. It's not gonna tame the coffee at all. So you gotta like make weak ass coffee for it to work well. That just does not a lot. That's just not allowed in my house. Because, I mean, if you're going to add booze to your coffee, then, you know, Irish cream, come on. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a really good, really strong so that your alcohol doesn't cut the coffee. And now Silent we know. Agreement. Now we know. <laughs> <laughs> well, this weekend I was uh, starting the panic shopping and I went to uh, Whole Foods, uh, not Whole Foods, um, World Market. If you have a world market in your area, it is a great place to find your stocking stuffers and strange candies and pickled things and foreign foods. Um, I was going to get into that, but we, we may have a lot to talk about. Um, you can also go online for them. But uh, they've also got a lot of their Thanksgiving and fall stuff marked down. And you know I like a marked down thing. And so... Uh, um, among other things, they had uh, cranberry autumn tea. Ooh. It's a, a black tea with cranberries and orange. Nice. And if you watch this show, you know the way I drink tea is by steeping it into whiskey. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm trying this out a little bit. Um, so far, it is not, not as prevalent as... Uh, your, your Earl Grey. Uh, so I, I don't know that I'll try this again in the whiskey, but uh, I'm still going to enjoy my whiskey. Excellent. But you can't go wrong with whiskey. I guess you, you, I guess you could go wrong with whiskey, but it, it's, it's, it's hard to go wrong with whiskey. We'll put it that way. I was in the, uh, the liquor store looking at the 
you know, a wall of whiskeys going, well, what should I try today? And they had one called Winchester. I was like, I don't even care if it's good. I like the name. Good name. Anything named after a gun is going to be good. Terrible. Like the vodka. No, no, no it's the tequila in the gun-shaped bottle. That stuff's terrible. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. Uh, I saw a, uh, when I was, so I, I was on vacation last week, and I saw a, a rum, an aged rum in the same gun-shaped bottle. I, I, I didn't buy it because, you know, the better the bottle, the crappier the liquor. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I was. You could have uh, had the funny joke of gun rumming. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm being told that was lame by the by the people over there on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I went down to uh, Port Aransas <laughs> uh, last week. And just spent the whole week gone goozling and uh, walking the the beach and. Uh, Walking the dogs, and and that was it. And it was awesome. I did absolutely nothing. I saw the photos. They were wonderful. And, of course, I was over here trying to recover from COVID and being like, that looks like a great time. <laughs> Much better than I'm having right now. Well, I was at work going, hmm, hmm, I'm jelly. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, it was good. It, uh, you know, you, you, it really cut into this, the shopping time, though. So now I'm having to, you know, like everyone else, start shopping last minute. So that's hopefully why we're here. They can give me ideas on what to do because uh, <laughs> I got a lot to do. <laughs> yeah. I guess I should start by saying, Thank God for Amazon. I don't generally like Amazon, and I don't promote them because they have too much of our money anyway. But between the wish lists that everybody has made on there that you can access and find out what they actually want, the uh, overnight delivery if you have uh, Amazon Prime, and the pricing, which is very competitive, man, I, how do I not shop at Amazon? And additionally, they've got their own delivery service built in, so it's not like you're dealing with the backload at the post office. So, yeah, I, I too also hate shopping at Amazon. But when I can sit down and just dump three hundred dollars worth of presents into a cart and hit go, I save myself eight and a half hours of shopping. I'm like. Yeah. Of which six is uh, fighting in traffic. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll wrap the presents for you and deliver it to its destination instead of you having to go to the post office. They'll stick it in a sack. It's a really cool sack. It's a quality it's a sack. sack. It's a quality sack for $4. I mean, yeah. in fact, I didn't have to go buy a bag and put frou frou paper in it and hand it to somebody physically. It's like, do you mean you go and buy bags? You don't just have the storage space in some random closet of all the bags okay, so you've gotten on here, previous here's Christmases? Here's a weird problem I have. And it, <laughs> it, is, it is a problem. Because I have the only boy kid in my immediate family. My brother has two girls. My sister has two girls. I have one boy. So I have a lot of like not like boy themed bags that I can't use <laughs> back. I can't. That There's no... There's no I feel like, you know, it's kind of like I, but the transition just, doesn't go forward there. You just save the christmas theme ones and you put them in their own little corner. No, I have christmas -y ones from like five decades ago, it seems like, that we just keep reusing the bag until it literally falls apart and yes. it's taped up and then it is, you know, burned in a ceremonious fire at my mother's house <laughs> in, the, in, in the fireplace. But um, it's... I still have that problem, though, is that I have this <laughs> inordinate amount of like boy themed bags. And well, I mean, it works for like, I can get away with giving some of them back to one or two of the girls because they're like in their late teens, early twenties now. And they're very much into either like the goth punk kind of like darker <laughs> colors and very more, 
uh, masculine, masculine stuff. And so right. we work now for a lot of that, but I've been holding on to these, you know, for eight years that I'm be like, when can I deploy these bags and get them out of my hair? I'm not going to throw them away. <laughs> They're like $5 a piece. No, they're worth more in my way than I, you know, than my bank account being spent again. It's terrible, terrible way to think about things. Now, Rita says, Amazon is not always the best price. And I know that because mm -hmm. I am mm -hmm. a cheap ass and a value shopper, but they're competitive generally. And, it, and they have all those other qualities to them. I, I would always go to eBay before going to Amazon if I was buying things for myself or I had time. Uh, yes. But we're, we're out of time. So you you, you got to pay the, the extra fee for being late. <laughs> also, um, in the generalized, uh, in most large mass amount of items, they're going to be reasonably priced because people know what a toaster costs and the people know what, you know, it's easy to see those. It's the more specialized things that are difficult because you have a seller on Amazon who sells it and there might be like one or two sales on there and one's always out because they are cheap and one has it for like twice the price. And then Amazon sees that and will basically amortize the, the, the two for their own when they get stuff into their own um, warehouse that doesn't mm -hmm. go to those two sellers because they do they do that. They find out what the high value items that are being spent and then they buy those so that their sellers that are on their site aren't getting the traffic, but they are still selling the item. And uh, so every now and then that gets weird and you can like, get off the site and go look it up, especially with the computer components and whatnot, and find out like, oh, well, that graphics card's not $400. It's 200 over here in, you know, in normal world and not cyberspace and stuck in Amazon. But most of the time, yeah, you're going to, you know, you can buy toilet paper or paper towels on, on Amazon, and it's just as cheap as buying it at the store, but it gets delivered to your house. <laughs> and also, that's th the weird things are kind of what we're shopping for now, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody has a toaster. Uh, if you don't wait for somebody to give you one when you need it, we're now looking for the, the those niche items that only your family members want. Uh, or maybe the question is, they don't have a, a, a gift list and you don't know what they want and so that that's the next problem that i have a lot of especially my my older relatives my aunts and uncles they, they don't have an amazon wish list or they haven't updated it in 10 years um and also uh once you're an adult like we are when you want things you just buy them yeah yep. <laughs> that's, that's so, also a problem. So my brother, he has a very cool list, except it's the fact that the stuff he hasn't purchased himself. So it's like eighty dollars for this like trigger guard for a certain pistol of his. And I'm like, I, I'll give you a a gift card to something or a, a Visa card with twenty five dollars towards that. Yep. Because I don't have that much for a milled piece of metal. Are you nuts? <laughs> this is Christmas. <laughs> Unlike today, uh, I was talking with my mom and she was just like, oh yeah, get me a wish list. And I sit here and I'm thinking, what on earth do I even put on a wish list at this point? Because yeah. if I want it bad enough, I go ahead and get it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I can uh, request my parents chip in for, towards my next tattoo at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That'll end that conversation if you want that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious. Just be like, oh, yeah, if you want to chip in, I'm going to be getting such and such. I'm going to get my sewing tattoo. Of course, I'll show my mom and she'll be like, oh, that's really pretty. Why? Why are you getting a tattoo again? <laughs> I'm my dad will just like glance at it and be like, stressed. and then walk off. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, the, the other thing uh, with adults, since they've already bought themselves the things that they want or need, they don't want any more stuff. I mean, I, I'm to the point where even as a hoarder, I, I, I don't know what I want, and I'm pretty sure I don't want any more stuff. Um, all, my older family members myself. are like, please do not give me anything. I don't know what to do with the things I have. Um, so the uh, 
what what I have found is uh, if you find food items, consumables, um, those are those uh, go a long way. Like yeah. everybody wants a a uh, cheese gift box because cheese is awesome. <laughs> Unless you're uh, lactose intolerant, then don't get cheese. <laughs> Yeah, at that point you have to know, you know, who's who's lactose intolerant, who's diabetic, um, who has you know allergies to chocolate or something. Um, <laughs> I have an uncle who I found out was diabetic after some years of sending him candy boxes uh, no. every Christmas, <laughs> and, they, and they never said anything. I, I happen to hear it from my mother. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's a little embarrassing, but now I've corrected it. I, I, I've got new uh, new things to get them. Uh, there are catalogs that have come to my house for like, you know, uh, the Wisconsin Cheese Man sent me a catalog. <laughs> um, or uh, Erica, what are those, those uh, sort of gift boxes? Yeah, um, I'm sure everybody's gotten one. Uh, those are expensive. Oh. When you come down yeah. to you know what they're selling you, that that's really expensive for a box of very few things. Um, yeah. We used so, to do that too, yeah. and we get like the summer sausage and cheese and the crackers. And they used to be these. Like, yeah, my uncle used to send us like my family one, and we you know split it between eighteen people while like trimming the tree. And it would have like three massive logs of sausage and like eight different cheeses and like five different crackers. And it would be a meal in its own. And now for like the same price, you get like this chintzy little, like two things of sausage and like two things of cheese that taste ultra processed suddenly. Mm. And it's just like, yeah, no, this is, this is not worth the price anymore. But thanks yeah, to, just, uh, just literally go to the store, buy the cheese and go buy the summer sausage there. And it's fantastic. Absolutely. H-E-B is a, is a godsend if you want to send out um, cheese plates or cheese sausage crackers, that sort of thing. You just buy them separately. Cheese they even... Uh, teas and coffees? Absolutely. Oh, yes. H-E-B teas are amazing. Like, just going for the H-E-B brand teas, um, I was, hearing about the tea that you're steeping in your whiskey... There's one that I don't even know if they sell it anymore, but it was deep in the depths of my cabinet and I pulled it out and I was like, oh, I hadn't opened this box. Ooh, let me open it. And it's a pomegranate black tea. Ooh. And that is amazing. It's one of the best black teas that I have in my cabinet. And I love this stuff. And I, I have no idea why I let it sit for like five years. <laughs> I, I feel that. I, I, I dig through my stuff and I find random loose leaf tea containers. Oh yeah. Ah, I wonder if it's any good still. <laughs> it's five years old. Yeah. Like, I'm going to drink surprised. it. I don't care if it's bad. I'm still going to drink it. I'm going to drink it all. <laughs> I'm really surprised that HEB, that HEB doesn't offer uh, gift boxes themselves. Um, I, that was a surprise to me. I, so I'm, I'm doing research today. I'm like, do, do they? And I went to HEB's website and looked for gift boxes, and they sell boxes for putting gifts in, <laughs> which is all the hits I got. But wow, I didn't even know they sold that. Now I could put my summer sausage and my fancy cheeses and my tea bags and uh, fancy crackers in the box at HEB. I never have to even go home, schlep it all together, and mail it. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. There is a little running around involved. But uh, you still got some time to mail and get things to where they they need to go. Yep. Because the uh, yeah. current guideline from the post office is um, if you are shipping anything for Christmas, the 17th is the deadline. Okay. So what is that? That is Saturday. That's Saturday. That is Saturday. Now. So if you do not have a gift to ship by Saturday... Don't ship it. <laughs> You're going to that or ship it and let them know that it's going to be late. Send now, a little cutout. Be like, this is your present. 
you can still send cards, I believe, because they're they're going uh, uh, priority mail, and that is much faster. Well, priority mail isn't usually great for cards. Cards are first class mail. First class. So, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I I misspeak, but you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that you know for I don't know what a stamp is now. Fifty cents. The is it up to? I got so used to the forever stamps that I have no idea what it costs at this point. <laughs> um, but then you can you can send a, a Christmas card with a note that says, you know, gifts forthcoming to buy yourself some time. It's not as good, but I guess it'll work. Or a text yeah. message. Merry Christmas. I got you a thing. It's coming. <laughs> okay, so here's another one. Hear me out. If you have a gamer friend who's building a computer... And considering buying PC games is, these days is really difficult, considering that you don't buy them in boxes anymore, which is very unnerving for me because I have a box full of boxes of games that I want to make like a wall behind me of just the box games that I love so much from a child. But nice. then, yeah, you can buy Steam gift cards. Yep. And if you already know what game they want from their wish list, because you can look that up, you can now purchase the game and have it sent to them. That was already a thing, but you can also now change it to where it's sent to them on a date. So you can like pre plan it. So I did that for my friend yesterday, uh, today. So it's going to drop tomorrow when I know he'll have time to play it and he doesn't have to worry about anything or about everything that's going on right now. So I can surprise people ahead of time. That's brilliant. Mm. And that's when brilliant. you say delivered on a certain date, it's not like a package it's just like an email that comes to them and says you now have this game right there's an email and if you when you have steam open because it runs kind of always in the background it'll pop up and show hey this person bought you a thing here's their note that's and awesome so I, I write some ridiculous heinous stuff in there and <laughs> my best wishes jack and you know or whatever xoxo you know whatever you want to do and uh so it's it, it all pops up there and then you can download the game. And so the only other thing I would wish you could do is have it like make it like shadow download before they push the button so it's immediately ready to go. But they don't have that yet. That, that's a that's a whole that's a whole user account issue thing. But yeah, that would be ooh, that would be interesting. Because yeah. oh, I got you crunch your throat on your computer, computer without your knowledge. That's <laughs> yeah, I know. Why I, can't I, I download that, anything? The only other thing, like if I could like make it where that would be a thing, but. Like certain people in your life can go download things on your computer for you. I absolutely know people who would be like, hmm, no, it would be really funny if I just send all of these games to so and so to the point that they can't use their system anymore. Right, well, there's actually <laughs> enough. Free, one, guy, one guy did actually give 5,700 games to his friend, and it was all the free games you could get on, on, on Steam. <laughs> Oh, and he gosh. had to sit there and remove all 5,700 of them from his from his playlist. No. <laughs> There's actually a button to remove all free-to-play games, but he didn't know that at the time. Oh, no. <laughs> uh -huh. okay. So there's, there's your gag gift for the Christmas season. Don't do that. Enjoy, gamers. Jack, you, you took a great idea and you ruined it. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Take it to the furthest comment, like the lowest common denominator. Of like, what's the worst that I could do with this? What, what's the lowest I could go with this idea? And then work up from there. But, but hey, uh, at least now I have an idea for what to put on my wish list so that, yep. you know, I can get another game. I mean, Steam gift cards, you can buy them on Amazon. Or you just tell people to pick them up at freaking Walmart. Um, yeah. like Same with Google Play. Yeah. My mother has now gotten to the fact that most things are digital and she loves wrapping things. She likes a physical deal to give people. And so she'll go and do that when I say, you know, she's bought me, I don't know, I have a, a 500 CD ream over here. I'm pretty sure most of it was financed by my mother over my most of my lifetime. Um, and like, at least I have a physical thing I can show her. Hey, look, I got a game for, for Christmas. And she had to start like wrapping them in different size boxes because, you know, I mean, when you're a child and you covet this one thing, you know exactly what size container it comes in. And you know exactly the sound it makes when you shake it. <laughs> Legos became an interesting debacle in my family where they had to figure out a way to fill the box in a different box because I would know which exact one it was. 
course, if you want to have a lot of fun with it, you buy some uh, little bells for uh, oh. crafting, and you throw that into the box with things. Oh, yeah, no, we've we've done that. I've we've gotten very creative. My my sister wanted a CD, and trying to wrap a CD is really relevant. Like it, 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 you can tell it's a CD. If you take a piece of cardboard and you fold it over in a triangle shape to go with it, and you fold, basically you wrap this triangle with a hole in the middle. You fill that with a lot of craps so when you shake it. It rattles like something's broken. <laughs> like the thing from like um, uh, the Ace Ventura Pet Detective box full of you know broken glass at the beginning. Okay. Reference? I don't get it. That's a reference. That's a long ago reference. That no one knows that anymore. I'm just shocked that that uh, you put so much effort into uh, misdirection of the the Christmas gifts. That that wasn't uh, ever a thing in my house. Oh, if it was God. Legos, okay, you know it's Legos. You know what the books look like. <laughs> you do, okay. You you still don't I mean, know. Yeah, it's a little sarcastic with it. We wrap <laughs> every individual piece of a coffee maker. <laughs> it, it, it was a coffee maker, like you could tell it was a Mister Coffee. Like wrapped, <laughs> each piece was taken off and wrapped and put back on it, and so it looked like just like you spray painted this coffee maker and then like put put stickers all over it to make it look like paper. <laughs> That's a level of effort that I am not willing to put into things. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> so Kitty, as I've mentioned, you you have your own store. Yes. And uh, you just finished a uh, uh, fair season, really. The so, second uh, fair season part you know, 2. <laughs> right, right. The fall fair season versus the spring fair season. Yep. Um, are you like out of inventory or are people placing orders and trying to get them shipped immediately? Uh, how is that? I am going? still getting orders. I am still getting orders online. Um, today, actually, I did a bunch of inventory because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I just recovered from COVID. Um, and so I am going through everything and determining what do I still have? What do I already have listings of that I can reactivate so that in the next you know, day or two, people could potentially place Christmas orders with me. And I am at the point where if I get an order, I ship it the next day. Um, it gives me a day to process it, make sure I still have it in stock and then make my run over to the post office and throw it at the people there and you know, let them add to their piles. But um, yeah, so there's still just a little bit of time. And then I have also opened up appointment bookings on my website for people who are local to the area. Or if you want to drive in from out of town, that always works too. And you just book an appointment on my website. I get the request. I approve it. I meet you at my workshop. <laughs> and you can shop for things. And I can size people into corsets. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So it's not like they're they're making appointments to have custom fittings. They're just, you know, needing to see your inventory. And you don't yeah. have like a, a real brick and mortar store. You have a workshop. I have a workshop. And yeah. I mean, it's, it's essentially a uh, mixed use space. So I've got all of my sewing machines in there. I've got all my jewelry making equipment in there. I've got all of my, my materials in there. So like half the space is a ridiculous mess because yeah uh, but then the main area at the front this nice little like 10 by 10 ish square is displays with what i've got in stock and that way people can come in browse try things on um i've got mirrors set up i can do the corset fittings get you measured get you into a corset figure out you know which which style is going to work best and then go, ooh, look at the pretty things. This is what is available in your size. <laughs> okay, awesome. I, I did wonder uh, how that worked out because we've talked about appointment making. And I'd, I'd honestly assumed that you would be like taking their measurements and planning a, a custom en ensemble for, you know, get, making special arrangements to come and see you. Uh, nope. I was like, wow, she's, she's really impressive. <laughs> I, I, no. I suppose we could still do that, but not by Christmas. Not now. Not by Christmas. No. No. <laughs> That's not happening. 
But um, one of the events that is going to be happening up here is the uh, Witch's Yule Ball at the end of the month. And so I'm also trying to have appointment availability for that, for the people who are going to that event this month. Um, and heck, there are Ren Fairs that are about to start up in January in Texas. So, yeah. <laughs> really? Yes. Yep. What, Fair what of Champions. Fairs? Fair of Champions? Yeah. That I've never is... heard of that. It is a new one. They technically are not having their grand opening until uh, 2025, I think. I can't remember which year it is. But they're doing repeated soft openings to build up the income for uh, working on the site, building it up. And so they're having these early events and then building up to the... Ren Fair that they're going to have moving forward. So yeah. it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting startup concept for a fair. Yeah. And I didn't even understand that concept until my friend who's the vendor coordinator explained it to me. <laughs> Wild. And this, this, I, I'm looking up uh, information online. This is in, we're in Texas. So it's Palestine, Texas. Yep. Ooh, I know where Palestine is. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I know. It's Palestine, Texas. I get it. Because, yep. yeah. Someone's going to get bent out of shape about it. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I, I was on an elevator earlier today with some people from Elgin, Illinois. The heck? I'm from Elgin, Texas. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Depends on where you're from and who you're talking to and what the name of the person was and how wrong they were with their naming scheme. <laughs> <laughs> then, wow. So there's that one. And then I've been seeing photos out of um, another, I mean, it's a Ren Fair, but it's inside of another place, like um, an antique fair kind of place. But I, I haven't looked that much into it, so I don't know how that one is operating. I don't remember its name. I don't even remember what area of Texas it is in. Um, but they had one of their events last weekend. There were actually a ridiculous amount of events, of events happening last weekend. And I was just like, I guess this is everyone trying to have a December event before it being Christmas. <laughs> Because because now is the shopping, you know, season. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got some some events down here that I've made notes on, and then I lost my notes. Oh no! <laughs> um, Blue is Jean that... Art Bar is down here. Yeah. Uh, now th that's not really a steampunk focused. None of these are, but there are things there by crafters that are, you know found objects or interesting lamps uh, or uh, some cool art that that is steampunk or appropriate to steampunk and you uh, you've got to peruse and uh, decide for yourself what uh, what works for you yeah um, and something I was going to bring up is you know for anyone who either it's too late to do your online shopping or you don't want to online shop and you do want to go and find things in person and find that unique thing look up the artist markets that are happening in your area. Like yeah, yeah. you might have to drive 20 minutes or 40 minutes, depending on what area you live in, <laughs> but there are so many happening right now. And some of them will just be a single day event. Some of them will just be a single evening. Some of them will be a three day event or like blue genie. How long does that one even run for? I know uh, it's Blue genie art bazaar goes like for a month. Yeah. So oh. there are things like that where you've got a conglomeration of artists that all come together for this space and you are specifically selling for the holiday season. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I think I was seeing, I think maybe three art markets that are going to be happening in Denton in the next, like next weekend. Uh, and I can't remember the name of any of them, but I, if you look, you will find something in your area. It's just a matter of look it up. Right. Facebook is a wonderful resource. And some sometimes the Facebook event in the description will list all the vendors that are going to be at the event and you can start 
looking them up because there are links to their Facebook pages and yeah. they have pictures of their equip their stuff. And uh, you can start, you know, taking notes and prioritizing. I need to see this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And there are five other events I got to go to today. So, I'm, <laughs> you know, powering through if you need to. Um, so, yeah. Uh, also, I saw today a, a Yule Bazaar at a bar called the ABGB uh, in Austin, which means I can have a beer while I shop. And that's always pleasant. You know how we like beer here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Rita. She writes, I wrapped a gift certificate in a huge box for my brother, and he had to carry it on his lap on an eight-hour train trip. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, Rita. That's, that's, that's I'm sure cool. your brother knows your, he, your sense of humor. through it all. Gets to it. And realize he could have just put this in his wallet? He'll never forget that. That is like the best gift ever. Most I'll memorable. never forgive you neither. <laughs> Oh, I'm also being told um, that giving to uh, a fund that you believe in is also appropriate, like the Malala Fund or the Seahorse Chocolate Fund that saves little chocolate seahorses from the wild. What? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you also get delicious, delicious chocolate, chocolate truffles. I guess you eat the seahorses when they come to you. I don't know. Um, it seems It seems wrong. I think there's something lost in translation here. <laughs> I would totally eat a seahorse shaped okay, so. truffle. That sounds awesome. <laughs> would need a seahorse though. Okay, so there's a chocolate company that makes chocolate shaped seahorses that all the proceeds go to save seahorses. Not they are seahorses, which changes the whole thing really fast for me. There will be a link being sent. <laughs> okay, now that that's out of the way, I apologize. <laughs> Let's get on with the show. <laughs> so I'm reminded of that uh, Monty Python sketch with the the chocolate shop, with uh, uh, the the little uh, chocolate frogs, with actual frog in them. Mm. Mm. No, no, never mind. <laughs> it's right. something completely different. <laughs> I'm just like I just watched a bunch of Harry Potter, and so I'm thinking the chocolate frogs in Harry Potter, yeah, and I'm I also get like past that part. My brain was stuck on that too. I know that I was watching Monty Python, Flying Circus, and all the episodes and everything, and I'm just like, I don't remember any of this. <laughs> cool. uh, well, now there's something for us to look up later. <laughs> <laughs> to the internet. That's a good idea, though. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the gifting of, uh, of uh, putting money to a, to a charity of your of your your choice or of the person you're giving to, yep. you, you know that that's something important to them. That's pretty cool. And um, if you really don't like the person, you can always give to a charity that they don't like and be like, here you go. It was given in your name. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and then you give the charity their name and address yes. so that they can keep asking them for money. So do it. <laughs> so evil. <laughs> <laughs> so... Go, to kind of go back to the chocolate seahorses. I've eaten these. They're delicious, by the way. And they have a little crunch to them sometimes. So that's one reason I thought there was a seahorse. But I think it's just like graham cracker. I don't know. <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, a hazelnut. Okay. So apparently I am just completely wrong in the head on this whole thing. Oh, only shaped like seahorses. We don't actually eat seahorses to save sea. Okay, you know what? That makes a lot worse. I was so confused about how all that worked. Okay. Have to capture them first and you freeze dry them so that you can then coat them in the like chocolate. A deer hunting thing, you know? You have to get rid of some to keep a whole lot alive or something. I don't know. I don't know. <gasps> you're, you're, you're purging the slowest ones. That way the yeah. team will you know, make faster seahorses. Survival so of the fittest. Yeah. Funny yeah. about that is that humans have killed enough spiders now that they're seeing that the spiders that are still left alive are smarter because they're not getting killed because they're not out in the middle of being like being stupid out in the open. We're actually causing spiders to be smarter. I, I take that as you feel. Yeah. Hey, as long as they stay away from me, I'm good. <laughs> no, they won't stay away from you. They're just going to be more secretive about it. 
Okay, as long as they don't crawl in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, don't eat them. <laughs> of course, the ones you eat now, you, you're, you're making less and less spiders that way, too, that one it get eaten. Yeah, the, um, no, those not. are the dumbest spiders. But apparently, they are good dipped in chocolate. <laughs> so whoever wants to donate to my chocolate save the spider fund, <laughs> I, I do have a link about them I'm about to drop below to, to my Patreon www.spider.com I will send everybody chocolate dipped spiders. <laughs> no. uh, let's see. What are the things we find oh. to give people before it's too late? My wife's over here going, now, the trick is, are they going to be venomous spiders? I'm like, ah, I'll be like a roll of the dice. You know, shh. Depends on which spider you choose to save. Oh. I mean, tarantulas are venomous, but they, they're generally not strong enough to bite you. Oh, yeah, all, all spiders are venomous, just to some of them more so to certain things, like, you know, ones that eat frogs, more venomous to frogs. Why does your wife know so much about spiders? spiders. She, she loves spiders. I was a goth kid. She was a goth kid. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's what, that's what I live with. I, I learn a lot of. I, I know a lot of nature things too. It's just a freaking random, you know. It's whatever. <laughs> One day we'll pick we'll pick my brain on a, on a, on a thing. It'll be fun. <laughs> oh, and she worked at a zoo, so I mean that that you learn things there too. I did not work at a zoo. I just eat seahorses and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Speaking, you know what? I can I can make this work. Speaking of eating things, uh, I found another store that my wife adores um, online. Penzi Spices. Oh yeah, uh, Penzi Spices. That's fantastic. They they really are, and they have gift boxes. Um, so uh, P E N Z E Y S. Uh, they they have. Uh, a great selection of things. If you need to make a last minute uh, gift, you can mail one of their, their gift boxes. And I've got a lot of uh, good responses, particularly to my uncle who was, you know, receiving candy before then. And he's diabetic. So uh, the, the, the uh, Penzi spice gift boxes uh, and uh, accessories and all kinds of fun stuff <clears throat> are definitely worth checking out. Uh, and if you look at their trial bags, just like a smaller amount of different flavors and, and spices and things, uh, you could get by pretty inexpensively. You could, you know, put a whole half dozen of these things together and and uh, have them ship them to friends and family. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure that's not the only spice place that has gift boxes to uh, check out. Uh or tea places, you know, steampunk teas, uh, a tea punk teas. Tea excuse punk. me. Yep. Uh, they're yeah, awesome. Guaranteed spider free, by the way. Is that true? Yes. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Talk to <laughs> talk to them. They'll they'll tell you. Be sure to ask them. <laughs> Why are you getting the question about the? Spiders in our team. Dad asking about spiders from like Steam Chest? I don't know. <laughs> Plugs. Anyway. Oh. Anything quit. else? Uh, any any other um, fun little shops or online stores that you've uh, that you can recommend? Hmm. There's Terra Toys here in Austin. That's always fun to walk oh. through. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's the closest thing to the toy store from like um, Home Alone Two kind of like science spectrum y. Like it's all the random gadget toys that you've always thought about wanting as a child that you can go in and play with before buying or not buying. It's that's fun. true. Rita suggests Etsy. Which is absolutely good. true. They're Which, additionally to that, um, Etsy gift cards. Because Ooh. there are so many places uh, that they make your 
purchase to order. And at this point, it's too late. So right. if you are shopping from your favorite Etsy shop and you see, oh, hey, it's got a two week lead time on it. And you try to send them a message of, hey, I want this for Christmas. You're going to kind of get a message back of, hey, we appreciate your business, but there's no way. Um, <laughs> get an Etsy gift card. If the shop is located within the U.S., they have to accept it Etsy gift cards. I mean, so, I'm, I'm, I presume that Etsy just sends them the money when the card is used. And they just, I, oh, no? Okay, I don't know. So it, it's a little wonky. Um, if, it's so it's wonky. awesome that, you, that they have them, though. Yes. I never would have considered that Etsy, as sort of a blanket web space, I could buy a gift card and then they can pick the, the, the receiver can pick wherever they want to shop. That's pretty cool. So what yeah. uh, used to happen was that you had to opt in as a shop owner. You did not necessarily have to accept them, but several years ago, Etsy completely redid their payment system, um, which a lot of us didn't quite like how they did it. But the thing that I really mm -hmm. liked about it was that you now actually accept Etsy gift cards. So if the shop is located in the U.S., they will accept Etsy gift cards. So keep that in mind. <laughs> also, okay. we're on the, on, the, on the subject. You can also give to Texas Steampunk Connection through our Patreon, which I have linked down below. <laughs> Any amount would be appreciated. Honestly, we, we only ask for a, a, a small donation, $3 a month. Uh, we, we say buy us a beer, uh, yep. and that, that, that adds up. That literally us. goes to keeping this steam program that we use here for streaming and some of the gear we'd need and some of the other little tertiary programs that need to run in the background for such things, literally just to keep the show going. Now, while we'll and be creating some, some higher tiers coming into the new year, as it's been requested of me, uh, but, and I'm working on that, Lawrence, yep. it's, just wait. Um, I'm trying <laughs> to put together something that's kind of cool that isn't us just, you know, begging for more money. Yeah. But we are. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but wait for that. In uh, this economy? No. We, we'd love to have more patrons uh, in small amounts that, you know, that, that would be awesome. We want to make sure uh, we give something for, for the amount of money given to us as well. So we're trying to come up with something pretty cool and unique. So <laughs> be on the lookout for that in the near future. Rita says, I want this in my stocking. Steelvintage.com, which I'd never heard of. I went to, and they've got good lord, like solid steel, huge dinner tables and and mm. badass furniture that looks like like super industrial. Um mm. that I feel like it weighs more than my house. Uh, All right, looking this up. This, this sounds fantastic. Th this would be something to bring in for homework on its own. This is cool. Oh, my God, that table. Right? The table on the front page. It's everything I ever wanted, a coffee table. It could have half Word dozen like, fat guys dancing on that table, and it wouldn't even bend. I mean, geez, that would be like the great like starting point for my statue of me. <laughs> <laughs> My my coworker, uh, who's really into uh, uh, soccer and uh, the World Cup happening right now, showed me a video of uh, people in town at a previous game who had just won, and they're yeah, six fat guys dancing on a table. <laughs> oh, okay, that's a table. <laughs> oh. Yeah, wow. Boardroom tables amazing. that mean business. So these are for corporate business places that are trying to impress and they they do i i can't imagine having this at a home oh uh, i would so have that in my home i mean i would but i don't have a room in the house that's big enough oh you have to make sure notice you have a room the big pricing? enough for your furniture no i will not room. notice the pricing you 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 be quiet they're based in the uk so any shipping is going to cost more than any of those uh, base prices are. <laughs> so we need to just join the military and they'll ship us over there. And when we're done with our two to five years, they have to re legally required to ship us and our shit back. Hey. See? 
thinking ahead. And oh, and we get like <laughs> weird retirement and some benefits for being a veteran. I know there's some other things like that you'll benefit bonuses. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell my uh, best friend's son to go and get stationed over there. How about that? <laughs> you know what? That's even better. Connections. Yes. Wow. I'll cut him in on the, on the profit. I am knocked out with that. <laughs> that okay. table is like. <sighs> I I'm a little disappointed in their one bar setup, though. I mean, it's not the fact that that's the products they have. It's the fact is what they can, the potential they have for the custom bits. True. Yeah, it is bespoke. So it they is can the over engineer glory that is this table. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so <laughs> we are we are coming up on nine o'clock. Unfortunately, <gasps> uh, I'm sure there are more uh, opportunities for shopping. That table that that we haven't hit yet, but uh, we gotta we gotta get uh, we gotta wrap it up and uh, call it a night so I could get back actually onto the internet and shop for more stuff. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about uh, people who have who have are, are bringing this show to us. Uh, we are funded in part by uh, J.R. Seeger's novel, A School for the Great Game. Edwardian teen Elizabeth Bancroft resents being sent to college in India. The college is, in fact, the British India School for Spies, where Elizabeth will learn the family business of espionage, martial arts, and the Tibetan mystic arts. A School for the Great Game is the first in the Steampunk Garage series available on Amazon. We're also brought to you by Kitty. Thank you, Kitty. And her show, Fair Treasures, which has a selection of Texas-made female-presenting costumes and accessories for Renaissance fairs and steampunk wear, and one-of-a-kind imported jewelry. You can shop Fair Treasures at www.fairwithaneetreasures.com or on Etsy. You can even buy a gift certificate and... Uh, get her stuff later uh we also have patrons we'd like to thank uh, jenny and ryan shaver and rita and lawrence allen who are listening in right now hey you guys thank you become a patron and we will uh we will thank you and and sing your your praises uh as well here at the end of the show uh you can find us on facebook at texas steampunk connection you can email us at texassteampunkconnection at gmail.com. Uh, our podcast is hosted at texassteampunkconnection.podbean.com. We're on Twitter at TXSteamConnect1. And we're on YouTube and Rumble through the Steam Chest subscription box. Thanks to Jack. And our music is brought to you by zapsplat.com. Thank you, Zapsplat, for letting us use your music. Thank you, Splat Splat. Um, is there anything else that uh, we want to bring up here before we close out? No, nothing? Okay, well, definitely want to wish everyone uh, who celebrates it a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Joyous Yule, um, Kwanzaa, have a great Kwanzaa. Um, whatever a few celebrates in the coming next few weeks. Uh, I hope you have a great one. And until next time, mind your gauges. Mind your gauges. 